G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself. Well, we're seeing a land grab happen here in Australia. It's very quiet and very few people are talking about it. Now Matt Canavan has uh, brought it to our attention. As usual, it's these uh, senators that are actually trying to do something, whether they're right all the time or not, it's another thing, but he is definitely trying to bring it to our attention that uh, we're seeing a land grab happen here in Queensland. Now it's gonna happen elsewhere, of course, but uh, we really do have to be very careful of all of this because the agenda is to make sure that you know we have food shortages and things like that. But uh, it's all about carbon credits, of course. But I'll let you look at this quick clip and come back to you. The conversation that I had recently with a mayor in Western Queensland, the uh, mayor of the Paru Shire, which uh, uh, surrounds the great country town of Cunnamulla in Western Queensland. There at the moment, uh, thanks to the scam that is carbon trading, 40 per cent of properties in the Paru Shire have been destocked, cattle are taken off their land for the purposes of creating this ridiculous paper of carbon credits. It does nothing for the planet, nothing for the planet. The farmers are happy, the farmers they make money. The investment banks come up from Sydney and buy the properties. Uh, they can go retire if they like on the coast. They get paid. But it's the it's the it's the tire mechanics, it's the cafe owners, it's the hotel owners in the towns like Kanamala that pay the bill, because when you get rid of all that cattle around Kanamala, Kanamala is only a small town, but when you get rid of all the cattle, there are no fencing contractors coming to town anymore, uh, there are no stock camps coming in at the end of their muster to have a drink, and all of that business is lost from Kanamala. And what happens with this? What do we do? What do we get from have destocking 40 per cent of the properties in Kunnamulla? The man was telling me this, you go down a road there at the moment, there's 12 pastoral properties on this road, big properties, big road. Nine of them are totally destocked. Just three of the 12 now with cattle on it. This is the front lines of the climate battle that doesn't get reported on down here. And the victims of this are the small country businesses uh, that are told your, your way of life, your lifestyle is no more and it doesn't do anything for the environment. It doesn't do anything. You know what happens to these properties when the cattle go? Weeds come in, pests come in, pigs come in. Come and have a look sometime. Come and have a look sometime. It's a total environmental disaster because there's no one left to manage it. These investment banks in Sydney, they don't come and manage the property. They don't come and get, take out the pigs. They don't come and manage the weeds. You know what they're doing? They're collecting their checks on the carbon credits. They're clipping that bill and making a lot of money, a lot of bonuses off this scam that is carbon credits. So it's pretty obvious from that clip that you can see that the investment banks are up to it again because of this carbon credit system. Now, as we all know, it's a giant scam and a big money maker. Uh, but uh, in the end of the day, what really happens is that we all suffer because we're going to see less uh, cattle produced. We're not going to see food growing. And it's just going to add to the world shortage of food that's coming. That's for sure. They're definitely attacking the supply chain for food. But, uh, you know, we have other problems as well. Now, with all this carbon credit system that's being put into place, uh, we've heard before about the carbon wallet. And that's really what this comes back to is in a lot of cases is that uh, these investment banks and investment corporations and economists and things are creating this system because it's a gigantic money maker. I'll let you have a look at this quick clip that I had shown you before uh, about a Dutch economist who was talking about the carbon wallet and that one of the things that they can do is uh, you know, have a system where people can buy and sell their carbon credits to people who can afford to buy them. And uh, this is really what it comes down to when we're talking about a carbon credit system and a carbon wallet, and that all of our food has a, a carbon tag on it, and all of these types of things. But have a look at this. Now is iedereen Laten we beginnen in Nederland, uh, die uitstootrechten verdelen en dat elk huishouden of elke burger een hoeveelheid uitstootrechten krijgt. Zodat we opgeteld, ja, niet meer uitstoten dan onze grens. Vervolgens kunnen we, het zit in een carbon wallet, kan je dat noemen? Kijk bij kopen. Ja, en dan kan je, ik, als ik wil vliegen, koop van iemand die uh, uh, niet, uh, niet gaat vliegen, omdat hij daar bijvoorbeeld geen geld voor heeft. Die verkoopt aan mij zijn uh, carbon uitstootrechten en krijgt daardoor een beetje meer geld. Ja, ja. Of diegene woont in een kleiner huurhuis en ik. Ik woon in een groot huis. Ik heb dus meer uitstootrechten nodig om mijn huis te verwarmen. Mm -hmm. En zo kunnen mensen met een smalle portemonnee ook iets verdienen aan uh, vergroening. So again, you can see that they are planning all of this. This is not um, a simple case of it just happened to be occurring here and there. Um, it's a systematic attempt to create a new system uh, of currency, essentially, 
Um, to me, it uh, would be a very good basis to create a new global currency based in carbons. Uh, <laughs> and we all know that they've been trying to centralize everything else, and obviously money is one of those things as well. So if you create a system where money is based on carbon, uh, that would certainly facilitate what it is they're trying to achieve. But we do have to be very aware of this and uh, what we can do about it is uh, yet to be seen. But I wouldn't be surprised if in the background there definitely is uh, you know, corporations like Vanguard and BlackRock involved in this again. Uh, we've seen that they have huge involvement in real estate across the world. And uh, they've made a very big effort to try and make sure that they're locking up huge quantities of land. We've seen that also with Bill Gates purchasing huge amounts of land and shutting it down. But one of the really sad things about all of this is that that land that's being shut down not only is no longer going to be producing anything, but it will you know, become feral and overrun. And um, if there was a point in time where they tried to return it back to uh, you know, decent usable agricultural land or grazing land, the cost involved would be absolutely enormous if it wasn't completely destroyed. If you've had anything to do with uh, you know, the farming sector at all, you'll know things like pigs are a massive problem. They really do destroy land in all sorts of ways. But this is not what they care about. They care about bringing in this carbon credit system and uh, making sure that we're all a part of it and we're all trading in it. And uh, obviously, you know, like from that video I showed you, poor people won't uh, be able to really gain anything out of it. They more than likely have to sell their allotted carbon credits uh, just to keep food on the table. While, as usual, the rich and powerful uh, jet around and do whatever they like and have the ability to buy as many credits as they want. And as we've seen with things like the law, it doesn't really apply to the rich people. Um, you know, most, most laws and uh, things like fines and that kind of stuff are you know, aimed at people like us who can't afford to be fined for not towing the line. But rich people don't have that problem at all. They can just pay fines. It's, it's no big deal to them. Uh, it's uh, yeah, really quite easy for them to evade any kind of actual laws because they can just pay for it and they're quite happy to. But this is the system and they are making sure that it's happening and it's definitely here in Australia. And uh, how long they start, to, you know, before they start expanding it out into other areas and bringing a good viable agricultural land that's doing a good job and providing us all with food and many other countries, I might add, um, to its knees, uh, we'll just uh, have to wait and see as usual because we don't have a great deal of control over it. And unfortunately, the voices that are standing up have been discredited in a lot of ways. Um, this is one of the unfortunate things about the minor parties and you know independent senators and things we have currently, is that uh, a lot of demonisation has occurred on those people or to those people, so that when they do bring up these issues, uh, the public is already pre-programmed to ignore what they're saying. And this is why we do have things like this new climate bill just getting passed without too many problems at all. And uh, this is the way it works these days, unless we see a massive reform in our political system and uh, the, the way our politicians are allowed to behave, uh, we're not going to see a change in that, unfortunately. But here it is, we've got it, we're going to see a lot more of it, and unfortunately, nobody's doing a great deal about it at all.